All right, if you will, let's open our Bibles together. Turn to Proverbs. I, I won't give you the exact verse yet because, again, uh, in our night study now, after we reached a certain chapter, again, we're going kind of a theme-based uh, study now rather than a verse-by-verse -verse study. Uh, again, with the, these Proverbs that we're currently looking at, again, it is simply one nugget of wisdom after a nugget of wisdom, and so great they are. Again, I, I hope you've been studying these, reading these on your own at home, and really gleaning more from it than we're able to bring out in our night study. But so far, we've looked in that style of, of, of study. We've looked at God giving us wisdom. Again, He is teaching us the truth. He's teaching us the best way of living, the uh, abundant way of living the way that pleases him in every area of life is what he's teaching us we've already seen him teach us um, about um, our name and our testimony about how to view it and protect it we've been taught how to do biblical and wise parenting uh, biblical and wise being a child to your parent as well we've been taught um, business and finances again God teaching us a work ethic and then also teaching us how to handle our money that he has blessed us with. Then tonight, though, we're now looking at biblical or godly marriage. Again, God giving us wisdom for marriage. We'll look at that. Um, again, biblical marriage, what God intends it to be. And then again, um, we'll briefly look also at him warning us against immorality. Um, so again, if you will, let's um, grab our Bibles and uh, we'll even turn to, if you want to, I'll read some of these very quickly. Again, that will be our style of study tonight. But write them down if you will. Go back and look at them more or briefly um, just turn to it real quick as we're looking at them and definitely see what the Lord is saying there. But definitely pay attention and I'll read these aloud as we study these. But before we jump into the text um, of Proverbs 11.22, let's bow to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you today. We thank you so much for this great day you've given. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here, a part of your church family, and uh, allowing us the opportunity to sing praises to you, to come together in person, to encourage one, an one another, to provoke one another unto love. Uh, for giving us an opportunity, an outlet to um, serve you and to serve one another with your gifts that you have given us so that the church may be grown in love and in unity and, and the likeness that you would have us to be. Thank you, though, for your word now. We pray that you would open our hearts, open our minds as we also do so, so that we may hear your word. Um, you will teach us your will tonight. You will teach us what you want our lives to be, um, what you want our marriages to be. Um, the world's way of marriage is nothing but um, hopeless and nothing but falling apart, but the way you intend it, we love and we thank. But we pray that you would teach us more in it. We pray that you would uh, show us areas where all of us, where we lack, uh, but where you want to draw us closer to the likeness um, of your perfection and your love. Uh, if there's anyone here that's lost, we pray that they would be saved also before it's too late. And it is in your son's precious name we do pray. Amen. So again, if you will, uh, one of the first ones we'll kind of go look at is Proverbs 11.22. But uh, also, I'll, I'll mention a few of them to you first. Proverbs 5, 15 through 17, 20 through 21. Um, we've actually... Uh, studied on both of these topics when we went verse by verse uh, up to it was some maybe chapter nine. So some of these on, on this will go relatively quick. We've kind of had an idea taught in the past, but really when it comes to this topic, we'll try to bring almost everything out that we can, even from the study of Proverbs as a whole. Uh, so again, what does God have to teach us of marriage? Well, he intend for the spouses to as it would say in Proverbs 5, to drink waters from their own well. Uh, what is this obviously teaching? It's even teaching us this, that um, husband and wife, they're to be satisfied and satisfied only get this in the intimacy uh, enjoyed between uh, their partner. Um, and again, it's not supposed to be 
someone reaching out somewhere else outside that marriage, outside their partner, and seeking that satisfaction. Well, you even see that with physical, with intimacy, but also, get this, you even see uh, with emotional um, help and emotional satisfaction. Uh, Your primary person uh, that you are fulfilled in that area should also be your spouse. Um, Think about this. This is sometimes an area where people will think it's innocent and that their their main trust for emotional support and emotional care and investment is someone that's not their spouse. And again, they may, again, someone of the opposite sex, they may find that as a as a confidant or whoever it may be. But again, to, to not go into the way of immorality and adultery, it is wise to only be satisfied again of the well within your marriage. Also, Proverbs 5 as well would bring out this, this teaching that you're to rejoice um, all of your life in your wife or wives even in your husband. So think about this for us to take from that. Again, those satisfactions that can only be fulfilled in the spouse, you are to rejoice in that and be satisfied for a lifetime. Uh, Again, and and that is a choice. Uh, And sadly today, that's something where many people don't choose to be happy within marriage. Many people don't choose to be satisfied and fulfilled within marriage and are, are many times tempted to step outside of marriage. Well, that leads to nothing but doom and destruction. Uh, Also, though, it says for us to do that, that scripture teaches us to rejoice always for a lifetime in your spouse. But since God gives us that command to do that, I love this with the commands we find in God's word. If he gives you the command, he will give you the power and he'll give you the principles to do it. That is something that we need to always realize with any command that God has given us. Will we fall short? Yes, we will. But if God gives us a command, he's given us the Holy Spirit, the power to live that obedience out and to to fulfill that. He'll also give us the teaching and principles that we trust in and that we obey to make that happen as well. Now, if you will, the one that I'd mentioned to you, Proverbs eleven twenty two. 22, uh, it also says here, it says, as a jewel of gold in a swine snout, so is a fair woman, which is without discretion. So think about this, even, even in marriage, uh, people are tempted to, to one, um, only go after beauty to, to when they're looking for a spouse, or even within the marriage, sometimes they get sidetracked and are focused on beauty that they see elsewhere. Well, well, one, that's not okay. And two, it even brings out here that even if someone is be- beautiful, but they lack discretion, they lack self-control, they lack godliness, it, it even says here, or modesty even, it even says here it, it's really like a gold ring in a pig snout. It's not as beautiful as the world makes it out to be. So again, um, and this is sadly the allure, allurement of many men and women that they're drawn into adultery. They're drawn away by beauty. But again, there's no modesty when someone is tempting someone to step outside marriage. There's no modesty there. So again, it's like, it's like a gold ring in the pig snout. That shouldn't attract us. If that person does not respect your faithfulness and your vow within your marriage, you shouldn't, I mean, you shouldn't be attracted to them anyways, but that should be another tell sign right there. There's nothing attractive or alluring about that person. Um, So again, all in all, satisfaction in your spouse alone. Um, Think about this. Also something that we see about marriage, Proverbs 11, 29. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. Um, I'll even read this one. Uh, Also, Proverbs 14 and 1, A wise woman strengtheneth her family, but the foolish tears down her family uh, by what she does and says. Scripture actually says this in Proverbs. It says, um, Every wise woman buildeth her home, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. So think about this for a minute. 
And I'll just tell you, it, it had he and she. Uh, he in the, the verse I read first and she in the verse that I read after that. So again, husband or wife could be guilty of both of these. And again, as we study this, I'm, I'm, I fall short in what we're going to study. You fall short in what we're going to be to study. So don't think that God is condemning you and, and it's all hopeless. No. When we look at the word of God, if we honestly see ourselves in comparison with the gospel, we will realize I've got room to grow, all of us, in every area we study. So again, don't feel condemned, don't feel beat down. But again, as we looked at in BTC, have eyes that says, when, don't, don't have eyes that say, when did I do that sin? Well, when did I do that? And just immediately say, that's not me that God's talking about. No, let us honestly examine ourselves in comparison to the truth and the standard, and then let God bring to light what he wants to teach us tonight. And if anything, grow for all of us, grow a little bit more in all of this. But again, this could be a man, this could be a wife, this could be a husband, this could be a wife. Um, but again, Proverbs eleven twenty nine: he that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. So again, if a man in, 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 the, in the marriage is is causing problems, causing arguments, uh, causing uh, uh, issues there, he'll inherit the, the wind from that. Uh, it, will, it will come back on him and the whole family. Uh, but also, again, as it brought out, even uh, every wise woman, get this, buildeth up her house. And again, that's not just for the wife. It's for the husband as well. It is wise for a husband to build up the house, build up the family. Build up the spouse, build up the kids, and but also it says, but the foolish pluck down her uh, with her hands. Just think about this for a minute. This is the way we should visualize this. Again, God is wanting wanting to build a beautiful life out of our life. He is wanting to build a beautiful home out of our home and out of our family, right? And again, God calls us. And how, how is this done? How is the building up done? Well, for any house to be built, it is, it is obedience to the commands of Christ. It is, it is living out the gospel. And that, again, that's when it comes to love, when it comes to life, that's when it comes to what he teaches us about marriage. Again, build up the home by having us all obey the gospel, right? That's a wise building of a home on a foundation that will last also, build it up in love. These two things are key to building up a home. Are we focusing on living in obedience to the gospel? And are we focusing on having love in the home and love in the life? Um, but think about this. All that God wants to do, we can, all of us, husband, wife, kids, whatever it may be, we can visualize this as it says it. Plucking down, the one who is foolish will pluck it down with her hands. We will literally dismantle what is being built. And I'll tell you, all of us have fallen guilty to that. I've fallen guilty to that. One in my, my own home when I was being raised as a child, but also even I'm trying to learn how to be a biblical husband. I'm trying to learn how to be a, a good husband now in my marriage. But again, we've all fallen guilty of this. But let this go through our minds. Are we living out truth? Are we loving uh, unconditionally in our marriage? Think about this scripture as well. Our words and our, think about this before I, I, I make notion of this verse. Our words and our actions will either build up or they will tear down, right? That goes in all of life. Any of our interactions in life, whether it be at school, whether it be at church, community, home, whatever it may be, our words and our actions will cause harm or they will cause good. It's, it's a given fact. But think about this even in Scripture. It says when we speak, um, we need to ask ourselves a question. Are my words coming across as are they grace to the hearer? Right. When, think about this. When we speak to each other in our home or outside the home, whatever it may be, is it grace to the hearer? Is it something that will help? Is it something that will build up? 
And, and also, though, of uh, uh, bringing uh, you and each other to, to holiness and to godliness. Again, will we be, be built up into what we are meant to be? Just if you, again, you can take that and grow a lot from that in many other ways, but those are several things that we've got to ask ourselves today. Am I building up or am I tearing down? Are my words, are my actions, are they building down, uh, excuse me, building up or tearing down? Uh, what else can we, can we take from this, uh, this topic of marriage? Proverbs 18 and 22, if you will. Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing. And all the women said amen, right? No, it then goes on to say, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. But this is good. I love this. Again, is it meaning that every person is meant to be married? No, Paul would even speak of that. There are some, not all and not most, but there are some who are given the gift of singleness. And my friend, he served the Lord in his, in his um, state in life, in his gift that he had. But then also we see this amazing truth that marriage, though, is also a blessing to us. And don't let us forget that. That, that's a blessing that God has given us. And when you find a wife, you find a, a good thing. And I'll say amen. I found a good wife. Um, again, I mentioned it before. Um, God raised, helped raise her through her, her parents' bi uh, biblical godly upbringing, but also through the teaching of this church, through your teaching, through your influence. And I thank the Lord for that. Um, but... You also think think about what we may look at next. It's going to get a little bit ugly, but then it's going to get a little bit good. But all of these are topics that are discussed in Proverbs concerning marriage. Uh, one will be uh, that we're not to, again, husband or wife, we're not to uh, live in anger, bitterness. We're not to be ar argumentative or complaining. We've recently actually talked about this when we... When we, when we had the uh, subject of thanksgiving for our last Wednesday night study, this is something that pricked my heart as well, is I think too often we, we are praise and thanks to God, and think about this, in daily living, we often have it on the level of, of how our circumstances go, of how good things are in our life, of how not hard that it is in our life, how it's not maybe difficult. But as a believer, it's not fixed on that. Our thanksgiving does not, it should not be based on circumstance. That's the way the world operates. But we, my friend, we trust this, is that God will work all things together for our good, believer, amen? And we trust this, that he loves us beyond measure and nothing is separating us from that love. And it lists a laundry list of things. And a lot of those were hardships. A lot of those were difficulties. But he even tells us, even in those, don't doubt that God loves you. Amen? And my friend, I think those two truths are key to us not, and, and we've all been guilty. I've gone through life at times where I've either verbally complained or in my heart complained about life, about my lot, about hardship. But when we are focused on even those two truths, God is good always, and he will use all things together for my good. Even if this hurts, even if this season is difficult, God's using it for my good. I can trust him, and I'm here to praise him. Amen? Verbally, but also from my heart. Um, but then, so think about that. Everything we face, we will either complain or we will praise. Amen. And scripture says for believers, give thanks in all things. All things. And all, part of all things is even in, in marriage, even in raising kids, even in uh, children being raised, uh, whatever it may be. So, uh, again, this is not condemning any of us um, because really all of us fall short in this. But ask ourselves this question. Here is one to look at, Proverbs 21 and 19. It says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. And this is not just the wife. Men can be guilty of doing the same thing. Amen. We can be guilty of, of uh, being contentious, of being 
uh, argumentative, of complaining, griping. We can be uh, um, guilty of being angry, right? Um, also, it says, uh, Proverbs 27, 15, uh, a continual dropping is a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Again, what it's telling us is if we're contentious, if we're complaining, uh, it, it's just drip, drip, drip. It, it's constant. But for all of us today, ask ourselves this. In marriage, in my life, or, and I'm just going to tell you, all of life before God, he will either see contention and anger, or he will see praise and thanksgiving. Amen? Again, it, it, we don't even have to verbally express some of these things. We can walk around with, a, again, a heart of anger. We, we may be angry at our lot, our circumstance. We might be uh, angry things don't go our way. Uh, or joy. And we, we know, we, we trust, God, you've got, you've got this. I can give you praise. I can give you thanks. Um, so again, man, woman, in marriage, outside of marriage, let us all uh, ask ourselves, am I, am I living life um, in thanksgiving? Am I living life in joy? Um, am I living life? Look, think about this even within marriage. Um, let us not fall guilty into being contentious, angry, whatever it may be, but... Uh, let us thank God. Thank you for my wife. I thank God for my wife. Uh, I thank God for, for her. And uh, again, husband and wife, we should all do that. Thank God. Uh, even if we're all growing, and we all are, um, every, even marriages that have been uh, married for, for 50 years plus, we're growing, amen? We're not perfected in love yet. We're not perfected to the image of Jesus Christ. So, Again, from the get-go, let us be thankful. God, thank you for marriage. Thank you for my spouse. Have peace. And again, two of those even promises that he told us. Um, and then in turn, give him thanks and praise. And then also simply focus on loving one another and having peace together and enjoying each other, enjoying marriage. Uh, my friend, that's God's intent for us in marriage. Uh, enjoy the blessing that he has given us. Um, so uh, uh, again, it got a little bit, uh, a little bit hard. We, we don't like to hear those things. I don't like to hear those things at times. I know I fall short in these. Um, but again, thank you, Lord, for giving us this teaching. Thank you for teaching us that yes, we can be thankful and joyful and give you praise even in marriage. But here's another one. Here's a good one that we've, we've looked at in the past. Actually, Mother's Day message was on Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31 is the virtuous woman, right? And again, man, woman, we fall short of this standard, okay? So whether husband, whether wife, um, all of us, we fall short of this. However, in marriage, this is what we strive to be. Um, it is not a, a looking at this list and saying, I don't meet this, it's hopeless. If we take that approach, it, it will seem hopeless, but know that God is growing you in this. And the amazing thing, it all falls key onto verse 30. I'm going to actually read verse 30 of Proverbs 31. It says, Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. I love this. This whole model of the virtuous woman it we will, and it may be a man as well. You will grow. You are growing into that now, and you are will continue to grow in that based on whether or not um you you are doing verse thirty. Are you a woman? Are you a man that feareth the Lord? Amen. That's what it all boils down to. We can't be a virtuous or godly man or woman outside of that. If we don't fear the Lord, and what is that? That's Love, adoration, reverence to God. And I'll tell you, that's uh, my wife is a beautiful woman on the outside as well. Uh, and I, I, I thank the Lord for that. But I'll just tell you, one of, the, one of the things that drew me to her to begin with was I knew that she was a woman that feared the Lord. She loved the Lord, and she still does. Um, again, desiring to live in, and again, the conversations we have in life, um, even today, uh, with both of us, 
Uh, it all boils down to what is the thing that will please God. What is the biblical thing to do? What is the right thing to do? Um, so again, uh, if 30 is, is where we are, if we have a healthy fear of the Lord, we're, we, we're saved, but we also seek to live for Him. I, I'm guarantee you over a lifetime, God is perfecting us into this model. He is growing us into this. Now, if you will, let's real quickly just read through the model. We've done an in-depth study on Mother's Day, but I'll just read some of these things, great things real quick to sum up these verses. Again, her, uh, a virtuous woman, it says, who can find her? She's rare. She's a beauty. She's a gem. It says, for her price is far above rubies. And, and, and husbands, wouldn't you agree? Having a godly wife that you know loves and fears the Lord, it's more valuable than, than all the rubies in the world. Amen? Uh, it can't compare. Uh, no money, uh, monetary amount can equate to the blessing that she is. Continue to go through verse 11 and 12 could be summed up as this. She's trustworthy. The virtuous or godly woman, she's trustworthy. Again, this is morally. She's morally trustworthy. She's financially trustworthy. And both are important, right? And again, you know she is that. Why? She loves and fears the Lord, okay? Um, so you, you know and, and you know that to be her or vice versa, uh, wives to husbands, you, if, if you know that they are a person that fears the Lord and loves the Lord, you can trust these things about her or him. Uh, what else 13 and 14 could be summed up is she's diligent, she's hardworking, she's thrifty, um, staying busy, staying productive. She also, um, next, and I'll just go through the verses, she rises early to prepare food for her family. She, she cares for her family. She's making sure their, their needs are met. Um, that they are fed. Also, she's wise with her finances, even a wise investor. We saw that with her. And, and again, we, we just now were taught about uh, biblical um, financial wisdom. That's something that's needed within a husband and, and wife relationship. We must both be husband and wife financially wise. Um, what else can you see even there? She, it, it even brought out the fact that she stayed up late taking care of the family. Uh, again, she's making sure that her family's needs are met. Um, she knows that's her, her priority, her role, um, that she's to care for the family. Also, she's kind and compassionate concerning the needs of others. She doesn't just focus on her. Again, she not only takes care of her family, but she even looks even further outward. She sees when other people are in need, and she has compassion. She meets those needs. She cares for them. Um, also, uh, she takes care of her own uh, appearance, dress. She, again, cares about that. She, she, she doesn't want to just let things go. She cares about that. She also helps husband achieve success and respect. In essence, it said that she makes him look good. Um, so, again, um, she cares about um, her husband achieving success and respect, and she helps in that. She aids in that. Also, it says, um, it could be brought out in verse 24, she's a willing worker when there is a financial need, uh, but chooses a job that does not draw her away from the priority of the home and of the family. Again, I love that. Again, we live in a culture where a lot of moms, they, they do work. Um, but again, those are uh, biblical uh, virtuous women is, is again, when that need's there, when that financial need's there, she's willing to do that. Um, but again, uh, she will choose something that focus her, she can focus on taking care of the family. Verse 25, this can be brought out. She's strong. My wife's strong. I, I don't want to challenge her to a, a, a arm wrestling match. Uh, no, she's a strong woman. She's, she's honorable. She's happy. Um, these are all uh, characteristics of the virtuous woman. She's also, she's wise. She speaks with kindness. Again, she's a wise, a wise person. Um, she cares about the things. She's attentive about the things she says and about the things that she does, and she is kind. She also watches over the family, verse 27. She refuses idleness or laziness. Um, also 28, think about this. Her children and her family will honor and praise her. Again, she's a blessing to the family, and they will naturally give her honor for it. Um, and again, you, you see that, um, again, 
uh, great moms, uh, their, their family will honor her for that. They'll brag on their mom. They love their mom. They care uh, for their mom, and they are very thankful for her. Um, husbands will do the same with, with their wives as well, very thankful for them, telling them constantly, telling God, I'm thankful uh, for my spouse. Um, also, think about this, but this is the one we brought out in 30, um, of the that she has a fear for the Lord, and that is far more important than any favor that she may have or any charm that she may have and any beauty that she may have because, again, those, um, they cease, they will die. Um, but also, though, again, with her fearing the Lord, um, she will bring, it will bring her praise. But also, so I'll sum that up in verse 30 of, she is deeply spiritual with an abiding fear of and faith in God. And again, this transcends all of the physical beauty that she has. Again, a deep spiritual beauty. And really, with, with men, with young men today, with women today, I hope that is the top priority when you're seeking a spouse. Um, again, it doesn't matter how, again, beauty's a plus, uh, but it doesn't matter how charming, how beautiful this person or this, uh, again, for women, for how, how that guy might look or for the guy, how that girl might look. The most important thing, do they love and fear the Lord? Do they seek to live a life that pleases God? That is a, utmost priority in seeking a spouse. Uh, verse 31 also, not only will her, her kids and her, her children um, give her honor and praise, but also her very own actions will bring um, a deserved praise uh, again. So again, the fruit of her labor, who she is and what she does, that will naturally even bring praise and honor to her. Uh, real quickly, let's look at immorality. We looked at, uh, we looked at biblical marriage. We looked at faithfulness in marriage. Now let's real briefly look at even immorality. Think about this immorality. When we looked at this study, again, we've already covered several of these Proverbs when we went verse by verse. We'll bring a few other ones out. Uh, but what we, what we must know is that it, it is simply also speaking about physical adultery. It is warning us, do not be tempted by adultery. Do not you yourselves fall into adultery. And again, that is, uh, that is fornication before marriage, but that is also adultery outside of marriage, right? Being unfaithful to your spouse. Um, so again, it is definitely te teaching us that, that we are to, as it will end with, steer clear of that at all costs necessary. It will ruin everything and take away everything. So steer clear of that. But there was also an undertone teaching uh, many of the times where it talked about adultery, there was an undertone teaching of speech, speaking of spiritual adultery, that we are to be faithful above all to God. Amen. Um, there is to be a spiritual faithfulness. We are to love and to adore, to obey God. Amen. Um, so we must also keep that in mind. And also that adulterous woman is, is the way of the world. It's, it's foolishness. Don't be drawn away with the way the world's going, with the adulterous, the attractive, worldly ways. No, be faithful to God and to his ways. Um, so as we uh, look at this, keep that in mind as well. Um, immorality, even uh, Proverbs 2 and 17, it says, uh, which forsaketh the God of her youth and uh, forgetteth the covenant of her God. Again, that's something that we should make sure we steer clear of, the, the way that we have been taught to go. And thank the Lord with many of us, we've been taught from an early age, and that's vital um, for us to be taught the word, taught the way at an early age. Well, again, as we continue to get older, as we make decisions for ourselves, do not forsake that way, amen? Um, do not forsake the way that we have been taught. Also, don't forget the covenant with God, amen, uh, that we are in a relationship with God, a covenant relationship with God. Um, there will sadly be times where we are unfaithful to God, but his faithfulness is pure always. He will always be faithful and be good to us, but that should further motivate us uh, all the more reason to be faithful to him. Also, here's some things that, again, strong language brought out, but for a reason, it's true. 
that is brought out about immorality, warning the believer of this. Um, Proverbs 5 and 5 says this, Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Proverbs 9, 18 also said this, it says, But he that knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Again, this is talking about um, the immoral woman. It's talking about worldly living and ideas in, in, in the undertone. But again, also about the adulterous immoral woman that might tempt a man. Um, again, you need to know that her only company um, are, in, are dead and in the depths of hell. Um, don't let the world allure you. Um, she's courting, uh, she courts death. Uh, and her only guests are ones that are dead, and again, on their way to hell or in hell. Um, think about this also. Uh, Proverbs 5, 3 through 4, it says this. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Again, uh, with either the, the figurative adulterous woman, worldly living, alluring you away from God, or whether it is the, the actual adulterous woman alluring you away from faithfulness in marriage, both, as it says, um, it's, it's, it's sweet to the ear. Um, she's trying to be persuasive. She's trying to sound sweet, but the end is bitter, amen? And also sharper than a two-edged sword. She'll cut you in half, right? So again, see already the strong warning against all immorality. Also, uh, that it brings this in, in Proverbs 5, 11, And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Think about this. Again, stick to purity before marriage. Stick to faithfulness within marriage. Why? Here's another reason. If you don't, if you follow towards immorality, if you follow towards adultery, it says, thou will mourn at the last. You'll be brought to nothing. You will be mourning. You will be in anguish. You will be in shame. This one, even the latter part of that, brings out physical disease, and that's a reality. Uh, you see studies on this all the time of the fact that they are getting their, their just um, meat to their actions. Uh, but it says this, it says, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, again, consumed by disease, from immorality, from unfaithfulness, uh, from not staying faithful to your one spouse and them alone. Uh, so again, may we avoid it at all costs necessary. What also do we need to know of immorality? Uh, it leads to even more bitter remorse and regret. Um, it will even You will look, if someone goes down that route, Lord willing, they will look at the very end and realize what they've done. And it says this in Proverbs 5, 12 through 13. It says, and say, again, after the fact, say, how have I hated instruction and my heart despiseth reproof. Why did I do this? Why did I hate the instruction that God gave me? Or get this, teachers, preachers in the church gave me. Or I hope this, what my parents gave me. What my older siblings gave me, the instruction they gave me to be pure before marriage, to be faithful within marriage. Why did I hate their instruction? It says, why did my heart despise reproof? God tried to correct me. God used people in my life to correct me. Why did I despise that? Why did I turn that away? It says, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me, amen? I'm just telling you that when someone goes down this route of immorality, that's the end that they meet. They will look back on it in shame and remorse and regret and think, why did I do that? Why did I go down that road? Why didn't I listen? Well, let us be thankful today. God has given us instruction today. He's given us warning today. Steer clear of it at all costs. But what we also need to know is that end does not always come, come about immediately. We know that adultery and immorality 
They start earlier. They start in the heart. Jesus teaches that lust in the heart is adultery already. Amen? So that is something that we are also thankful for from the Lord. He teaches us, guard your heart against lust. You don't want to get to this latter end. Well, make guards for your heart. Protect your heart above everything. Make a covenant with your eyes. Protect your eyes. Amen? So again, that's simply where it leads. Also, we stay away from immorality because, my friend, we know that it is seen and is judged by God. Everything we think, everything we say, everything we do, God sees it and he judges it. Um, Proverbs 5.21, it says, For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. God's observing it all, right? God sees it all. Um, So again, let us realize that we will give an account to him. And that should affect the way we live lives now. Um, Think about that um, even tomorrow, the next day, each week. God is watching everything that we do and we will give account. Also, Proverbs 6 actually brings out, and and 29 also brings out that it will bring a man to poverty Again, uh, it said even there, I'll, I'll read the latter part of it. It says, well, let me just read a, a portion of this. It says, lust not after her beauty, again, the immoral, the adulterous woman in thine heart. Lust not after her beauty in the heart. Again, protecting your heart. Don't lust. Guard yourself against lust. And it says, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Don't let her bat her eyes at you. And to tempt you, it says, for by means of a whorish woman, get this, a man is brought to a piece of bread. He's brought to nothing. He's brought to a piece of bread. It says, and an adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Again, it's, it's simply saying that, that, that someone, that the adulteress that tempts a man is even worse. It will cause you to lose your literal life. But also, again, with even the horse, the, the fornicating woman, um, she will bring you to a piece of bread. But all in all, what do we take from this? Avoid it at all costs. It will ruin your life. How many lives, even, even in our lives that you can recall, how many lives have been brought to nothing over adultery? How many men's lives have been brought to nothing? How many families have been destroyed over adultery. So again, thank the Lord that God cares for us. He doesn't want that for us. He doesn't want lives to be destroyed by sin. That's why he is warning us now, don't go down that road. Also, uh, think about this. It will burn the soul as surely as fire burns the skin. So again, it it goes deeper in destroys even more it will it can make a man uh it can can a man take fire in his bosom and the clothes not be burned you can't play with fire and not be burned it says so he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent again you'll be guilty not not innocent of that um also it says in proverbs 6 32 think about this but whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding And he that doeth it, get this, destroyeth his own soul. He's causing internal destruction with adultery. He is sinning uh, with his body, the temple of God. Um, And again, he's destroying more than, or he or she, more than they know. Think about this. These are things that are brought out from Proverbs 7. That one who, who falls into adultery is compared to three foolish and helpless things. It One, it relates it to an ox going to the butcher. It, it also relates it to a, a, a trapped stag awaiting the death of an arrow. Again, a deer caught in a trap and is waiting for that final shot of an arrow to kill him. It also relates of a bird flying into a snare. Well, what can we bring about of this? My friend, this is utter foolishness. If we go down that road, if we're tempted in this, it shows that we, we're refusing and lacking understanding. Because, and it also it shows of, of, of helplessness, uh, of, too, of, of going down a road and, and, and 
even with lust, don't, don't consider it. Don't fall into it at all. It will hook you before you know it. So again, any sin at all, don't flirt with it. You're putting yourself in a trap um, that would be near impossible to escape. But again, let's bring this even out, um, that we at all costs, Proverbs 5, 6, and 7 will bring this out, that we are to avoid adultery at all costs, lest it cost you everything. Lest it cost you everything. Also think about this, Proverbs 23. We haven't gotten to that yet, but it also tells of that many fall into this ditch. It says, For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for a prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. Again, many people, men and women, fall into this trap of adultery. But as believers, kingdom citizens, children of God, let us be on guard and not be counted as one of the many that fall. Also, we need to know that um, adultery also, we, we saw it damages the soul, but we also see that it sears the conscience. Think about this. When it's talking about the adulterous woman, it's going to mention in this verse her actions and then her conscience seared so much that she doesn't even realize it was wrong. Um, Proverbs 30 and 20 says this, Such is the way of, as an adulterous woman, get this, she eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. But my friend, this is the world that we live in. A world that we live in where fornication with adultery, with other sins, people have fallen into this sin, have made it a norm, and they don't think they've done anything wrong. But I'm just going to tell you that is what God is warning us of. Don't sear your conscience even to this sin. It will do it. Um, so again, may we avoid it at all costs. Proverbs 7 also brings out um, it's the path of, of fools. So again, the one that lacks understanding, the foolish, they go down this route. But again, as believers today, let us heed the instruction of our Father, of our great teacher, Again, as we've seen, who cares about all of our life. Cares about our, our life in marriage. Cares about our life as parents. Cares about where we are financially. All of it. Thank the Lord that he cares for you and me, amen. That he is teaching us, even tonight, how to live a happy and a prosperous marriage. How to live a, a holy marriage. A marriage full of truth a marriage full of love, how to warn us of this downfall that destroys many um, to avoid it at all costs. May we be wise tonight. May we not be fools. And again, the way to be wise is what? Let us listen to the instruction of our Father in heaven. Amen. And let us put that into action and build a life on obedience to the teaching of Christ. If you will, let's end our, our time tonight with a prayer and we'll have invitation in in this time of prayer dear heavenly father we do come to you today thank you so much for today thank you so much for all of bethel for our church family for allowing us all to come together to do life together to um, serve in and grow in a church together thank you for giving us all gifts and all purposes and all a place in your amazing church and your wisdom um, thank you for giving us that opportunity. I pray that we uh, take that opportunity each and every time and, and fulfill our purposes in and through your church. But we thank you so much tonight for your word. Uh, you teach us in all of life. You care about all of our life. If we, if we go through life this week when things are hard and in times where we do fail, let us stop and realize we have a God who cares. We have a God who is there that we can go to in prayer to cry out to for grace, for mercy, for help. Uh, and we desperately need your help. But thank you for being a God who cares about our, our everyday life. You care about the details of our life. You care about every area of our life. Very importantly, you care about our soul. You care about offering salvation to all who would repent of sin and call upon the name of the Lord, your Son, to save our soul. Uh, and we thank you so much for this. May you use us this, this week. 
Um, may you shine your love and your truth in our marriages, um, in our churches, uh, in our communities, in our workplace. Uh, may you use us for your honor and for your glory. And it is in your son's precious name we do pray. Amen.